he remember you to perfect your way before him. Let's open the Bible now in the book of 2 Kings chapter 6. Second book of Kings, chapter 6. Second Kings, chapter 6. to read from the beginning a couple of verses if you have seen it I read and the sons of the prophets said unto Elisha behold now the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us let us go we pray thee unto Jordan and take thence every man a beam and let us make us a place there where we may dwell. And he answered, Go ye. And one said, Be content, I pray thee, and go with thy servants. And he answered, I will go. So he went with them, and when they came to Jordan, they cut down, they cut down wood. But as one was felling a beam, the axe head fell off into the water, and he cried and said, Alas, master, for it, it was borrowed. And the man of God said, where fell it? And he showed him the place. And he cut down a stick and cast it into in thither. And the iron did swim. Therefore said he, take it up to thee. And he put out his hand and took it. May God add his blessings to the reading of his word in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. With a couple of moments, I, I, I want to share with you uh, this message I entitled, Carrying God Along. Taking God Along. Praise the Lord. The theme of the program, the Lord will perfect that which concerns you, uh, has been approached from different angles in this program, and uh, I just want to add my voice to it with the hope that it will tonight. I know we are continuing tomorrow, but it will help to further cement the topic of this program in your heart. Praise the Lord. And I want to say this before I proceed, that uh, for God to perfect that which concerns you, you have to... Uh, stick to God. You have to stick to him. And sticking to him uh, principally about sticking to his word. Amen. Praise God. And I believe uh, many of the ministers talking about uh, the message believing the message, staying with the message, I believe they are trying their best to try to let you know that 
you need the word of God in your life journey. Amen? Because basically that is what the message is. The message is the word of God. The Bible. Uh, because uh, uh, sometimes when we talk about the message, the message, the message, if somebody comes in our gates and that person doesn't really understand what we're talking about, where we're coming from, the person might be confused. So sometimes I am deliberate when I'm talking about the message by calling it the gospel. The message is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ at the end time. It is not another movement. The message is simply the gospel. Praise the Lord. And when the prophet of God was presenting uh, the message, it, it was simply the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the focus at the end of the day is the Bible. Paul said we are written epistles read of all men. Praise God. In other words, we are Bible personified. When you move up and down, you talk and you eat, whatever you do, you are the word of God in the flesh. Amen. So that is what we are being restored to because the history of the church has uh, been characterized by mass or large scale departure from the word of God. That is what church history uh, taught us, that men departed from the word of God. And there was dark, a dark age, a period we call the dark age. And then God set out to restore because in his program, before Jesus come back, there must be a restoration back to the apostolic foundation. Remember, Paul said in Ephesians 2, he said, Therefore, we are no longer strangers. Amen. But we are fellow citizens with the saints of God, and we have been built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets with Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. Praise the Lord. So all we're talking about is the Bible, the word of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. So the apostolic foundation that was laid, Jesus talked uh, about a parable about a widow that was disturbing a uh, king or uh, disturbing one ruler and the man got wearied and they decided to answer her prayer and then Jesus made a statement he said, he said when the son of man shall come back to this earth shall he meet faith what faith it is the faith Jude also talked about he said contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints it is that faith. So that consciousness should be on us. That the message is the Bible. Praise the Lord. So whatever we are doing, we are talking. When we are talking, we should be clear. We should let people know that we are being restored back to the Bible. That is what the prophet of God was doing. To bring us back to the Bible. We are Bible people. Praise God. The people of the book, even Muslims recognized in their book, they call us the people of the book. Praise God. So we are the people of the book. We are Bible people. We are people of the word of God. And it is the will of God that the word of God should become flesh in us. That is why Paul calls it written, apostles, uh, written epistles written letters written word of God in the flesh hallelujah amen so having said what I have said I want to uh, ask for us to examine this story and get a lesson from it remember that the sons of the prophets in the story that we read sons of the prophets 
they came to the prophet Elisha who had a double portion of Elijah's anointing. Praise God. They came to him and said, Man of God, we have seen that uh, the place we are dwelling is straight, is too straight for us. In other words, it's too tight for us. It's very uncomfortable for us. So we have come up with this idea of expanding it. Praise God. We want to expand the place we are living. So we want to go into the bush and cut down some wood and come home and make a bigger place for ourselves. So we will be more comfortable. Praise God. Talk about you and I and your personal business. You know, remember I said taking God along. Carrying God along in your personal life. In your investment, in your business, in your marriage, in whatever you are doing, take God along. Praise the Lord. Amen. That is the only way your way can be perfected before God. Hallelujah. So, so they told the man of God, and the man of God said, that's a good idea. You can go. Then one of them came and said, say, but man of God, we like for you to go with us. Amen. And then he said, yes, I will go. And then um, the man of God got up and followed them to the bush to go cut some wood. And then as they were cutting the wood, the head of the axe of one of them fell into the water. And then when that happened, the man shouted, so, oh, master, alas, and it is borrowed. Praise the Lord. Because as they were cutting the wood, the head removed from the body and plunged into the water. And you know, the head of an axe, I mean, an axe is a flat, it's, it's a flat uh, object, you know. Then it sliced into the water and then went down into the deep to the bottom of the water and you can imagine maybe muddy muddy bottom if it is bottom if it is uh, muddy uh, it will slice into the mud and cover itself there even if you dry up the water you may find it difficult to locate it praise the lord or even if it's sandy sandy surface down there because of the nature of the, the object, it will slice into the sand and bury itself there. Praise the Lord. So that even if you are diving or even dry up the water like Moses dried up the Red Sea, it will be difficult to locate it. Praise the Lord. So it was a serious problem. And the man said, I don't even have money. If he had money, he wouldn't have borrowed it. So he borrowed it and then he was wondering, how am I going to pay the debt? How am I going to pay back to the owner? So he cried out to the servant of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. What if the servant of God was not there? Amen. Praise God. When you take God along in what you are doing, hallelujah, we know that problem might come. Amen. But the Bible says to the righteous, it said, uh, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God will deliver him from all of them. Praise the Lord. So we are not afraid of problems, but the point is that when God is with you, when you take God along, when problem comes, God is there to stand for you, to, to fight for you, there will be a solution. Hallelujah. That is a very good thing not all to be happy about. When you take God along in your marriage, that may be problem because marriage, that's no perfect marriage. Amen. But when the trouble comes, God is there for you. Hallelujah. God taking them through the Red Sea. God knew there would be problems on the way. Praise, praise the Lord. But when the problem came, there was a solution. Amen. Hallelujah. So, the man of God did something and I want us to look at it closely. He said, where did, did, 
where did it fall? Where did the axe head fall? And then he showed him the place. Praise the Lord. And then the man of God cut a branch of a tree. Amen. He didn't uproot a tree. He just cut a branch of a tree. Amen. Hallelujah. And that tree represents Christ. Jesus is the tree. The tree of life. But you notice that he didn't uproot the tree. Amen. You know, trees, you can uproot a tree. Anybody can uproot a tree. It doesn't have to be a rock or tree for you to uproot. If it can be a sapling, a young tree. You can pull it up from the root, isn't it? But the Bible says, the man of God cut. He cut a branch of the tree and threw it into the water in the direction where the axe fell. In other words, he, it was a type. It was a shadow of Christ. Christ is that tree. It's just like when Moses was bringing the Israelites out of Egypt into Canaan, along the way they, they thirsted at a point and there was no water to drink, but they came across a body of water and yet the water wasn't good enough for drinking. It was bitter water. The waters of Mara. You remember? Praise God. So they complained to Moses. Again, what did Moses do? There was a principle. Amen. It was a type. It was a shadow. Moses cut. He could have got uprooted one little tree and threw it, I mean, thrown it into the water, but he didn't do that. He cut a branch of a tree and threw it into the water and the water became sweet again. That tree that was cut was Christ. It was a type of Christ. When trouble comes, what do you do? Just bring in Christ into that problem and the problem will disappear. The, the bitterness of your marriage, the bitterness of your, your business, whatever kind of category of problem or bitterness that is in your life, if you can just remember that there is a branch of a tree of life which is Christ, when you bring it in, the problem disappears. Amen. So he cut a branch of tree and threw it in there and then the problem vanished. What happened? The axe came out from where it was hiding and began to swim. It began to float on the water. And then he told, he told him to reach out his hand and pick it. He reached out his hand and picked it and gave it back to the, 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 the man. Now watch. Sons of the prophets. They were sons of the prophets. But they didn't say, well, we are sons of the prophet. So in other words, they were prophets. They were all prophets. It's just like the congregation now. We are all holy people. We are all baptized with the Holy Spirit. At least we, we by faith, we believe that we all have the Spirit of God. You are a Christian and you're born again and you have the Holy Ghost and you too have the Bible. But you watch, they still went to the man of God. They still went to the prophet. They didn't say, well, we are also prophets. We can handle it. If any problem comes, al comes up along the way, we can handle it. They didn't do that. They still went recognized that is spiritual leadership. That is spiritual leadership. Even among prophets, that is a major prophet. Even among evangelists, that is a prominent one. Praise the Lord. And that is why in our time that we live, you know, you know, the prophet of God, I was discussing with a minister some time ago about uh, the prophet William Brown, and I said, and I told him something. I said, I said, do you know Brother Brown belongs to the fivefold ministry? He said, no, 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 but I shouldn't say that. I said, no, it is true. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, because the man of God is not a prophet in the mode of an Old Testament prophet. Sometimes we project him like that. He is the prophet in the New Testament. Remember, he is in the New Testament. I remember that the only ordained ministries, channels of perfection, channels of perfection. Brother Isaac read it the other day, scriptures. I thought he was going to preach on it. He said it was a message for the pastors. Channels of perfection is the fivefold ministry. Praise God. So, but you know, in 
the fivefold ministry, I want to say this. I'm being deliberate so that somebody will understand something there. Praise God. You know, in the fivefold ministry, Paul was in the fivefold ministry. Was Paul in the fivefold ministry or not? He was an apostle and he was also a prophet and he was a pastor and he was a teacher. He had all of them put together. Praise the Lord. The New Testament. But yet, he was a dispensational pastor or dispensational prophet. Praise the Lord. He had a dispensational ministry. Ephesians chapter 3 talks about the dispensational ministry of Apostle Paul. In other words, he was a, an apostle first and foremost in the fivefold, and yet he was a dispensational apostle because God gave him extra responsibility. Hallelujah. That is exactly how Brother Abraham came, came along too. God lifted him up to make him, to give him a dispensational role in the restoration of the church back to the apostolic foundations, back to the Bible. He doesn't have to operate like Moses back in the Old Testament because it will amount to pouring new wine in old wine skins. Praise God. So he was a New Testament part of the fivefold ministry but God lifted him and gave him a post to, I mean, gave him a dispensational responsibility just like God gave Paul at the beginning gave him dispensational role to play in the body of the church are you getting my point praise the Lord so I am saying that look at this Elisha who, who was Elijah by anointing Elijah by anointing double portion now he was there and then the sons of the prophets were there but they didn't say well we are also prophets they recognized there was a leadership role here they recognized that Elisha was a prominent prophet a major prophet so they wanted to go to do this thing cut wood come do their house and they took him along they employ, employed him uh, to follow them that means that as we gather here right now as a church, different ministers, you know, different callings, different fivefold operations, yet there are prominent people. And that's why we still have elders. Praise the Lord. I just want us to recognize this. Don't say, well, because I'm a prophet or because I'm an evangelist or because I'm a pastor, therefore I have nothing to do with anybody. Let us know that even as a pastor, there are prominent people, even among the apostles, the 12 disciples, remember there was prominent people. Hallelujah. And they were giving their due respect. Praise the Lord. That is one lesson I want us to learn from this story. Praise God. Carrying God along. Amen. Sometimes carrying God along has to simply do with consulting your pastor for what you want to do like they did here. Consulting your pastor. Take him along. But sometimes we you know we go into our individualistic cocoon and we say no after all the pastor is not feeding me. I have my life to live. Who is the pastor to tell me what I should do in my house? Or you want to run a business? Who is the pastor to tell me about the business I want to run? I, I better do what I want to do. Yes, you have a right to do whatever you want to do. But do you know that it will help you better if you take him along. Consult the pastor and tell him, Pastor, this is what I want to do. You are a servant of God. But most times, God is not always speaking directly. God can speak directly. That's the New Testament orientation. Unlike in the Old Testament where a, a servant of God alone, stands alone with God and everybody must look up to him. In the New Testament, the Holy Ghost is released on everybody. Praise God. But in spite of that, amen, God still put leadership gifts. And that is why it would do you some good to approach the pastor and tell him, Pastor, this is what I want to do. I want to do business. I want to marry. Let him guide you. It's not because you don't have the Holy Ghost. You have the Holy Ghost. You are a child of God. You are born again. But 
you need leadership. God ordained it that way. Recognize people in authority. People that are ahead of you. Hallelujah. We must take note of that. You know, one time, I'll give you this, uh, this thing and I will close. You know, one time, because we hear people talk so much about uh, this uh, autonomy or whatever it is. You know, let me just say, tell you this. You know, the the young minister, when he's called by God, he has to mind his ministry to fulfill it. But he has something to learn from an old minister. I give an example. Eli, somebody talked about Eli today. Eli did something. God wasn't happy with him. God had rejected him or was going to remove him. And then he called a little boy, Samuel, and told him, he called him, the boy had the voice. He didn't know what to make of it. He ran to Eli. Eli. He said, you called me. He said, no, no, I didn't call you. Go back and sleep. He went back. The second time the voice came, Samuel, and he rose up and went to uh, Eli, 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 Eli again and he said, no, I didn't call you. Go back and sleep. He went back. The third time he had a voice again and then he, he came and uh, then it dawned on El Eli that God was speaking to this boy and he told him it is the Lord calling you. When he calls again, amen, he said, when he calls again, tell him here am I. What do you want me to do? He told him how to answer the call of God. And then he did as he was advised. So when that voice came again, he answered properly. He responded to the call of God. There's something to learn here. Praise the Lord. The young Samuel needed guidance. He needed direction. He needed counsel. In other words, there's something a young minister can learn from somebody who is been there before him. Praise God. But there is another, I have to balance it. That is the other side of that coin. God sent a young prophet to go and prophesy in Samaria. And he went to prophesy. And God told him, when you finish, turn another way and go back. And eat nothing, drink nothing, just go home. Praise God. And he went to fulfill that ministry, that calling. And he did as God told him to do. And he turned the other side and was going. And an old prophet, you know, I believe in balancing things. That is what we, we, uh, is necessary, especially when you are trying to teach. This is not really a teaching, but uh, just a little message trying to encourage you. An old prophet came up to him and said, I... I heard that you came and you did the exploit you did and so forth. Come and eat. An angel told me that you should come and eat something. He said, no, God told me not to, to do that. He said, an angel told me. And then he persuaded him and he had respect of persons and went to eat. And after that, the same old prophet told him, God says the Lord, because you disobeyed the voice of God, God said, a lion will kill you. And then as he left, he was sad. As he left, a lion killed him and stood right there. People were passing and looking at him, his, his body. This same old prophet came and picked his body and buried it. Praise the Lord. Amen. In other words, I'm saying that you need to mind your ministry. Make sure you do the will of God without respect of persons. But at the same time, you need experience of an elderly minister. It should be balanced. Don't fly with one wing. You need both. Praise the Lord. And if we do that, carrying God along, carrying God along, whatever you are trying to do, remember your pastor. Take him along. Let him counsel you. Let him pray with you. When trouble comes, God will recognize that from the beginning, 
you have carried him along. Carrying your pastor along is carrying God along. Do you understand what I'm saying? Glory be to God. And uh, how do you do that? By the word of God. Amen. Let me, just, let me just list a few things and I'm closing. Now let me just list a few things that I jotted here. Amen. You, you take it along. In other words, the, your pastor, you know, there's a difference between the pastor you need and the pastor that you want. Sometimes people want they, they, they want a pastor that will tell them what they want. But you need a pastor. The pastor that you need, in other words, you are God-given pastor. Stay with him. Do you understand that? And then you have to operate with a fixed mindset. David said in Psalm uh, 57 verse 7, he said, my heart is fixed. My heart is fixed. In other words, your, his heart was firm, fastened, stable, established, secure, rooted. That is the mindset we must have. Don't be an unstable person because somebody who is not stable can't get anything from God. Have a mindset. You have decided to follow Jesus. You've decided to go no matter what happens. Mindset. And then the other thing to carry along when you are taking God along, the other thing to consider, you must follow the vision of the ministry that you are in. The vision of your pastor. Key into it. Praise the Lord. And uh, the last point I want to make is that cover your pastor's nakedness. You know why? Your pastor has not been gone to heaven and come back. He's the man of light passion. He has his mistakes. He has his shortcomings. Love covers multitude of sins. So, love him, cover his, his nakedness. That is what I mean by that. Glory be to God. In the same way that God expects us to cover one another's nakedness. In other words, bear with one another's infirmities. Hallelujah. And as you do that, you will prosper. God will prosper your way. God will perfect your way. Can we stand up and pray that prayer? So, oh God, teach me how to carry you along in whatever I am doing, every aspect of my life, so that when problem comes, Lord, I will call on to you and you will answer me. Pray that prayer now. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Father, we pray that we, every one of us here will cultivate the habit of carrying you along. Grant it for us, O oh God. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. We can see that Every wise person always do that. The time God said Moses and the children of Israel should go to the promised land, Moses requested that God should follow them. If not, they will not go. And God said his angel will go before them. Yeah. So it's good for a child of God.